clean eating. Essentially, um, in the last number of years, we've seen a huge drive towards consuming less processed food. Consumers looking for more free from foods, gluten free, antibiotic free, and then foods that are more local, organic, raw, natural, plant based. So with that and an understanding that this is a market of significant worth, uh, this clean eating market valued, according to Euromonitor, at $180 billion at 2020, we felt we really needed to go out there and understand the mindset around how consumers were approaching food and clean eating. So this was a study that was designed to provide the food and drinks industry with um, an understanding of the consumer mindset to ultimately drive growth and create new product uh, opportunities. So in looking at this study, um, our partners in research were core research. It was um, a multi-layered approach. It involved desk research, in-depth interviews, a robust, quant a robust quantitative study where we spoke to over 9,000 consumers across Ireland, UK, uh, the US, the Netherlands and Germany. So that was 2,000 in each of those markets and uh, 1,000 in Ireland. Um, and um, we also had a qualitative community of 40 consumers across those five markets. So it was a very robust piece of work. So we'd start off with trust and how consumers feel about the food industry now in the context of trust. So just some kind of um, death data, firstly, when we look at Mintel, 67% of people in France agree that companies are more interested in making money than making high quality food and drink. According to Food Insider Journal in the US, 54% of consumers agree that many free from claims are not meaningful to most food. And uh, in 34% of people trust the EU to regulate safety standards of food and drinks sold in Germany. So this really highlights a lot of distrust that's emerging. And what we've seen emerge in more recent times then, and I'm sure this figure has probably gone up in COVID times, but 60% of consumers think it's important for a brand to be transparent about all its practices. So what we're seeing emerging, and um, you've all heard of this call out culture, uh, where consumers want to understand exactly what's going on behind the scenes with brands and how they make food and what the ingredients are within them. We also have a cohort of younger people, near, nearly half the population of 21 to 38 years, looking to buy from smaller brands, more independent brands. Why? Because they put more trust in them than bigger organizations. It's hard for people not to be cynical. You know, we've had this whole world and as a consumer researcher, I've seen it for years where there was, you couldn't eat butter, no, butter was great, you couldn't eat butter, then butter came back again. So um, people get cynical about that. There's been lots of foods out there that claim to be healthy and um, uh, project themselves as uh, offering lots of nutritious ingredients. This Naked Juice brand found itself in trouble in the States uh, for uh, having uh, making incorrect claims. Uh, we've had lots of ingredients that have given us scares over time, like aspartame colors, artificial colors in food. And then more recently, we've seen this emergence in this world where transparency is desired of businesses like Kind encouraging the food industry to disclose hidden sugars um, and they actually created a pop-up at the time we designed this study which is around 2019 and they they created a, an event and out of that built this online index and um, encouraging the the companies that were in a similar sphere with them so in case you're not familiar uh, with kind they work in the healthy snacking space so they put a call out to other businesses who also produce kind of snack bars protein bars um, and to disclose their ingredients and it was quite interesting really that when you start to compare what is perceived as a healthy bar alongside your more treaty type bar that actually the sugar content is often as high if not higher in some instances. So briefly I'm going to touch on some consumer trends before I go more into the clean labeling and this is um, fresh off the press this is from a study that we just launched over the last week and this looks at our approach to diets and dietary lifestyles so this was done um, in the autumn of this year and there were five themes coming out of this um, looking at our relationship with health and um, the environment, our back to basics approach to food, how COVID-19 has, has changed our relationship or I suppose evolved our relationship and how we look at health and the environment and then identity. So just I'm going to go through a couple of um, findings from this research. So again, the health and wellness market is one that uh, continues to grow significantly. And again, across this study and in this sample, we uh, talked to over nine markets, so over 18,000 people even a high percentage of people deeming themselves to be very healthy, 64% of people making an effort to eat more healthily. And actually COVID has accentuated the desire for protective health and functional foods, which I know James touched on there earlier. And we've seen a huge surge in interest in foods in particular that are designed uh, to tackle immune issues. 
cooking from scratch. So Irish people are enjoying cooking from scratch. This obviously is a global stat here with 45% of people liking to cook from scratch. And what we found in COVID-19 is that people are have been doing more cooking. They've been embracing um, food in ways that they haven't been able to do for some time. We conducted a study last year called What Ireland Ate Last Night. And in that, we were learning that people, yes, they wanted to cook more from scratch, but the reality is they often don't have time. But as we're, we're, we are doing more cooking, we are increasingly looking for food that is free from additives and preservatives and that is more natural. And it's interesting then um, when it comes to consideration for clean and natural food choices, we see that the desire for those foods is more prevalent in markets that place a priority in provenance. So in terms of buying um, the most natural uh, food products, that uh, index is highly in Italy and France. And in terms of buying foods with shorter uh, ingredients list, that also indexes highly in Italy, France and Germany as well. 65% of people are making more of an effort to be more aware of the environment around them. And we've seen a lot of people embracing uh, environmental concerns in a significant way since COVID-19. Um, and there has been a, a growth and desire for foods that are made with uh, sustainably sourced ingredients. And that has grown obviously since the pandemic. However, what we did learn within this study as well, that some people, consumers are starting to question how healthy it is to follow a, 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 a vegan diet. And 29% uh, of people believe it's not a, a healthy or balanced diet. And there are some perceptions emerging that plant-based foods are too processed. So as an example, 30% of people think meat-free alternatives are too processed with almost a quarter, 23% of vegans um, specifically believing this to be the case. One of the things we're seeing um, a couple of years ago when we conducted this study, it's an update on a study that we did in 2018, this dietary lifestyle study. And we see uh, that people are moving uh, to a world of more balanced uh, eating or certainly trying to eat a more balanced diet. So a couple of years ago, there was a really uh, strong emphasis on perfection and striving to be your best. And one of the things we learned out of this study that yes, people are trying to do the best, but the reality is it's, it's hard to be perfect all the time. And I think with the mental health issues we've seen in particular emerge in COVID-19, um, that perfectionism is, is not actually the ultimate goal for people. So it's more about progress than perfection. And with that, there's trade-offs. So what we're seeing is that there's high overlap between good and bad choices. So in terms of consuming uh, fruit weekly, we see 95% of people consuming fruit weekly, 91% of people consuming vegetables weekly, but 69% of people consuming chocolate weekly and 68% of people consuming sweets weekly. Um, weekly and that ties up with a lot of research we've done during COVID where you know on one hand people are embracing health there's significant consumption uh, happening of, of fresh fruit and vegetables that's gone up a lot since COVID uh, but at the same time we're also treating ourselves you know we're at home people need to reward themselves in different ways. So going back then to what is clean well clean we know um, as a definition is this whole unnatural unprocessed uh, foods uh, that avoid artificial ingredients and highly processed foods. Yet, according to a study uh, conducted by Canadian in the States, 45% of US consumers don't know what clean label means. And it's really important when we're labeling products that we're very clear in terms of the articulation of what the, the process is or um, you know, the, the meanings of, of labels. So sustainability is one label now that's been uh, thrown on packs at the moment that people have uh, or an, an brands are using and people uh, really don't necessarily understand well what exactly does sustainable mean here i have some stats from the british nutrition foundation which says that 69 percent of brightons um, are unlikely to adopt a plant-based diet in 2021 in part because of the education gap when it comes to the meaning of plant-based food 41 percent of people say that a plant-based diet means following a vegan diet so really, you know, in the world of food and, uh, you know, marketeers are, are, can be very guilty of this. There's an assumption that people understand grass fed, plant based protein, putting more protein on pack. But the reality is most consumers don't necessarily understand that and they need that help. 57% of people feel the fewer ingredients in food and drinks, the better. So shorter ingredients list feels like you're dealing with a healthier product. What claims um, influence purchase? So we created this claims influence index across that sample of 9,000 people across the five markets and 100% natural came through as the most important um, thing for people when they're selecting foods, followed by no added sugar, sugar-free, rich in fiber, free range, but 100% natural being most important. In terms of claims consumers pay most attention to, so calorie remains um, the number one here with 55% uh, looking at calorie breakdown um, uh, in kilo uh, in kilo calories per 100 grams and 57% looking at calorie breakdown in product um, 
Nutritional breakdown then, we 51% of people looking at uh, nutritional breakdown in product. So looking at labeling, only one in five claim to scrutinize the ingredients panel on average. And in a way that's not surprising. So even if they are concerned about health and ingredients, the reality is when you're in a supermarket, you're only looking at a shelf for five to seven seconds and you, you tend to be in a rush. Um, and 41% of people are confident that they can tell it is, uh, if a food is healthy by looking at the label. So the label is responsible for an awful lot, but it's not just the label, it's also the packaging. One in three people claim they can tell if a product is healthy by looking at the packaging. So packaging cues are very important in, in terms of what you're trying to represent or what you're trying to say. 50% of consumers are more likely to buy if the health or nutrition um, information is on the front of pack. So again, that gives them confidence. Again, it also is speed. It gives them kind of speed to move on to the next aisle. Symbols also play a role and the semiotics of symbols as we call them. So whether that be uh, positive tick marks or heart health symbols, all give consumers confidence in products. Now, again, and coming out of our dietary lifestyle study, uh, we did learn that symbols can present challenges and do need explanation, whether that be in um, food labeling or in the sustainability space uh, around recycling symbols, consumers do need help. Yet nonetheless, they do give that sense of that layer of confidence at a subconscious level. Colour also plays a role. So in a world where you see lots of um, vibrant colours, uh, that can be suggest suggestive of foods that are more artificial. Um, and what we're seeing is an emergence of colour codes around food that are more aligned with being green, clean and natural and really playing to the kind of cues that consumers are looking for with food. Consumers also like to see traffic light system. As we said, if they see the nutritional labels on the front, that, that really gives them some sense of confidence and understanding. Negatives are easier to understand than positives. And if we look at this packaging here, the power of no is really very clear in terms of giving the consumer confidence at a number of levels. So this is a yogurt, Siggy's yogurt brand, Australian made brand, and they clearly have no stevia, no spartamy, no sucralose, no gelatin, no artificial sugars. Is it, It's an all natural product. And that's further supported by the packaging itself, which really gives kind of a clean uh, color um, sense in, in by its whiteness. Ingredients to avoid, um, so sugar, salt, and fats are all ingredients uh, that are kind of the number one ingredients consumers actively look to avoid. Uh, again, um, ingredients and, and the kind brand I talked about earlier are all about ingredients you can, um, you can pronounce. And consumers have a problem with ingredients that sound like they're chemical related, uh, even though they're good chemicals, they do need help uh, to understand whether they're, they're good or they're bad. And if they read these unpack and don't understand them, it can pre present a problem. So the eights and the, the ites uh, create challenges as do the excess for people. So 54% of people are concerned about ingredients that sound artificial. 37% of people tend to avoid products if they contain unrecognizable ingredients. 44% of people tend to avoid food and drinks that contain preservatives. And 52% of people avoid food and drinks uh, that contain sweeteners or sugar substitutes. 21st century clean. This is where we see technology playing a role in enabling consumers to understand uh, whether a food is healthy or not. And again, you know, this stat here, 32% of people saying they would use an app to establish if a food is healthy. This is something, the use of codes, that it's gone in and out over time, but in a world where consumers are looking for more transparency, in a world where people live on their phones, uh, it's likely that this will, the use of technology will be more, become more prevalent uh, for food safety reasons, as well as for health reasons, uh, and also uh, to ensure that businesses are behaving responsibly. 17% of consumers are aware a product's label can be scanned and have previously scanned the label. This is an example of an app um, that's an interesting app that is, is quite a number of people have, have downloaded it. But what it does is the Geeky Food app, it allows you to scan the barcode on a product and then it gives a scoring system for a product in terms of its nutritionals, in, uh, for its packaging, whether it's sustainable or not, where the food is made. So if you're in Ireland, whether the product is an English made product, so it scores based on localness. Um, it looks at uh, the fat calorie, as I say, the nutritional contents and this, the, the production process as well. So then it enables you as a consumer to to make a choice as to whether this is the right product for you and then um, the, the app will recommend other products that might be better alternatives. So I have here just a couple of case studies that show you some brands that are um, behaving well I suppose in terms of best in class clean labeling. Um, Frosta is a German brand and I know the packaging mightn't be very suggestive of this and I had a video but 
I'm not playing the video now today, but on the back of these packs, they frost a list out all their ingredients. So where they're from, where the food is sourced from, uh, every single item. So I, I always describe it as an art director's nightmare because it's so uh, tedious in its detail and very unsexy when it comes to the world of packaging. Yet it's very truthful and honest. And as a brand has been very, that has been very successful in the frozen food space as a result. Uh, this particular brand here, an American sweet brand, uh, again, uh, really kind of putting those uh, labels of uh, highlighting the nutritional credentials um, and sustainability credentials up front on the pack. This is a, a, a drink, a sparkling fruit drink, uh, which has one gram of sugar as opposed to your 39 grams that you typically see in a can of Coke. Uh, they don't use stevias, all their ingredients are completely natural. And um, so, you know, that idea of trading out um, you know, bad for good ingredients be becoming something more of a norm. Uh, this is another example of that. You've got your um, linguine that's made with an ingredient that is, is seen to be obviously with the chickpea, which is highly nutritional. Um, businesses like Unilever, I don't know if you're familiar with the campaign that they've been running, uh, which is really rooted in sustainability. And they're really trying to encourage people to eat a more diverse diet in a world where a planet is going to, um, you know, the population is going to grow so significantly over the next um, couple of decades that to grow food in a sustainable way, we need to have a, a more diverse diet and move away from, uh, you know, the 12 plant-based foods that we eat and the five animal species that we tend to, to focus on. And um, so they had an eat for good day. Uh, this is Unilever uh, last week. And what they're encouraging to do is get people to trade out in the, their dinner that they're making one bad nutrient for a better nutrient, but that better nutrient uh, should also be something that's favorable towards the planet. Again, uh, labeling that highlights not just nutritional credentials, but also process how the food is made, how it's grown, how the animals are treated, uh, becoming more and more important for people. Again, uh, this is uh, an example of um, a tuna brand, and they, um, on their label, talk about how they are the lowest mercury of any brand. Um, so again, owning something that might not motivate everybody, but um, is uh, also highlighting uh, that their tuna is 100% tested, it's uh, wildly caught, and it's obviously very high in omega. So very clear, transparent packaging. So from a business point of view, um, what we have been saying to businesses is that they really need to focus on trying to use hero ingredients that are more nutritious uh, and that are more sustainable where possible as well. Uh, semiotic codes, so understanding the, the language, the visual as uh, that you put in your pack and being um, truthful about what they are, trying to engage people uh, if you're in the clean space with uh, visuals that are, are more appealing and um, developing a, a more transparent way of working uh, and understanding the role technology Technology is playing more and more in doing that. Embracing the challenge if you're not operating in, we'll say, a sustainable way or in a healthy way. What we often suggest to people is that you collaborate or form partnerships with people to try and enhance or improve what you're doing. And then managing the language you use is something that's really important. And education in our dietary lifestyle study is something we talk about that's huge. If we want to encourage people to eat better, to have a more diverse diet, um, we need to do that uh, through education in the first instance. Thank you.